Welcome to our farm. We're the Turners from McLean County, Kentucky. This is my wife, June, my daughter, Hannah, my son, Matthew, my daughter-in-law, Leslie, and our grandson, Jack. I'm the eighth generation on this original track of land. I guess when I was born, that's when my operation started because that's, that's all I've ever known is farming. And I was, you know, raised in, on a farm and that's all I really ever want to do. So I never, I never took it as being a job. In the farming industry, we're probably a, a pretty small farm, you know, between five and 600 acres of row crop. And we row tobacco and uh, in poultry, we had hogs and cattle all the time I was growing up, and that kind of those kind of markets kind of went by the wayside. And then in '98, uh, you know, the chickens come along, so we kind of thought that was a good opportunity. Well, I really fought with my mom and dad about that because they thought maybe I was going to lose the farm when I invested that much money in chicken houses. But after a few years, it was they thought it was all right, so it worked out pretty good. And now they think they always. Mom's always asking, and Dad, he always wanted to know how much the check was at the end of the flock. He was out there. <laughs> We're standing here in a about approximately 20-year-old poultry house that the first one of the first two we built in '98, uh, and uh, our chickens in here are three weeks old. We walk through these birds uh, at least three times a day, checking for mortality, see if they have feed, water, if their temperature is suitable. We're here at our new poultry farm. We just started here in the 1st of January and we're expanding. We've had the, the sons come back from college and a few years ago and we need to generate more income and chickens or poultry are a, a good uh, way to expand the operation. There's uh, approximately 25 to 30,000 chickens per house and we get five flocks a year so there's around like 150,000. Poultry use a lot of water probably uh, on a good hot day in the summertime, we'll use about 5,000 gallons per house. So over a flock of 42 to 49 days, you know, you're talking about a about a $2,500 water bill per flock or more. And uh, so we we build the lake, and it's a it's it pays itself back. This is our composter litter storage facility where we uh, take the litter that we decrust out of the houses and move it over to this bin over here where we compost our uh, mortality for each day. We apply litter to our land for economical benefits as well as soil health. We see a rise in our organic matter, our soil texture, our fish and worm population. Yeah, well, we do a lot of soil health and we've had field days here for soil health and you know, people come out and dug, dug holes. Uh, the area soil health specialist did and you know showed us what was going on here you know we've read about it in magazines and books at seminars but when somebody actually comes to your farm and shows you this is what's happening it really brings it to light my name's dan porter i've been working with the natural resources conservation service for 32 years i've been in ohio county for about 25 Mark Turner and I have known each other about all that 25 years. And, uh, we started out with a, a good conservation plan. I called him one day, about probably six years ago, and I told him, I said, we have a new program that I think you ought to be looking at. We already had the, good, the plan, and we knew where he was headed, we knew where he wanted to go, and I told him about the conservation stewardship program. And he came in the office, and we sat down and talked about it, and uh, he decided he wanted to do it. He's been in it one year, and now we're going to our second year and he is just doing great things. We, we no-till all our row crop ground and uh, at least strip till or no-till all our tobacco. And we use cover crops. We do no tillage unless it's to fix a spot that we need to, uh, if it's a conservation, if we've done some land work, put in some gullies, plugs, waterways, that'd be the only way we would ever uh, work any of the soil. One field in particular back here on the creek farm, it never made a very good crop. And then we no-tilled it for 20 years, started growing cover crops on it. The year before we made, we, we averaged more than 200 bushel corn on it. And then last year we averaged more than 70 bushel soybeans on it. And I don't think the growing conditions were any better or worse in those years 
in the last 20 than they were the 50 before that. So it must be something we're doing to the ground that makes it produce more. He, he just considers what he's doing is ordinary. You know, he considers himself ordinary. And he doesn't know that what he's doing is actually above and beyond. My overall goal was to be to leave this land in better shape than when I got the opportunity to use it. And it's only for a short time that I'll get to use this, but I want it to go on for generations to come. Myself, I, I don't understand how anybody wouldn't want to work with their family. I, I, I see that I was raised up with my family working with them, and then again, I get to work with my, my son. And I, I've changed roles now from my, being a son to a father, so everything that I, that I cause grief for my father, I understand how it come out now, <laughs> where it come from. <laughs> he brings new things in and a new way of thinking that I, I don't pick up on. And he's, he's more uh, technical savvy than I am. When we get ready to start something that's got buttons and dials on it, I say, here, can you help me out here? And he just look at me kind of funny, but anyway, he'll, help me, he'll get me straightened out. The last thing my grandfather told me was that dad was doing all right, don't screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs>